Hello there folks, today we'll take a look at the game called The Lost Expedition. It's published by Osprey Games and the designer is Pierre Sylvester. The game is inspired by the book The Lost City of Z and it is talking about the most famous uh, expedition which was attempt to find El Dorado. So mm -hmm. in this game you are going to lead an expedition uh, like certain specialists and you will try to find this magnificent city. Trust me. I will guide you through the jungle. Ah, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> the Lost Expedition is played over the course of several rounds until you either reach El Dorado, the last card right there, or all your explorers die and you will lose the game then. You can play the game cooperatively, up to five players. You can play this game solo, or you can play this game one versus one, where we will have two uh, paths to choose from, and then whoever gets to Eldar the first will win the game, or maybe you will both die. Because the jungle is a brutal place. Now, let's say we're going to play the two-player variants, cooperative, uh, cooperative variants. So, now, each player will get six cards. Uh, if there are more players, each player will get uh, four cards into his hands. So, what do you do with these cards right here? These cards have, first of all, the number on bottom, and different symbols on top and there are three different sections there is a yellow section which are events the red section which are choices and the blue section which are options not all cards will have all the options some have only one of these some cards have few of them and so on so you will start with the morning each you have uh, three explorers but it doesn't mean that somebody controls the explorers you both decide cooperatively what to do with these you also have free ammunition for food at the start of the game, for health, and it's the morning phase. Now, you want to reach El Dorado, so you want to go through that jungle. First of all, each, each morning and evening phase, because when, when the morning is done, you will go to evening, you will create a path of jungle. So, starting from the expedition leader, you will play one card face up right here. In the morning, the cards, whenever you play them, they will be rearranged into uh, in, in numerical order from the lowest to, to biggest number. Also, to note that you cannot discuss what you have in your hand with your uh, fellow gamers. You can only play it and then discuss about the card. But I mean, uh, you cannot give any information on what you have in your hand. You can do some general stuff like, let's say, we, like, Bessie has only one health, we really need to get some extra health somewhere. So, let's go through that. So, let's say, I'm just gonna play these cards, yeah? Um, you will play, each, each player will play one card at a time until there are six cards in this jungle path, yeah? And then I'm gonna explain what we have here. So, also in the morning, the cards will go in the numerical order, so it's like that, like that like that, then 38 and 42. This is your path that you will go through in the morning, right now. And the other three cards are left for the evening. So, first of all, let's take a look what we have. So, there are the events, the yellow. You must trigger the events on the cards. So, for example, this event says we must add another card to the end of the path. All right. We did that. The other events, for example, they might say you get something or it says you skip the next two cards. You just discard the next two cards. You don't have to do them. And there are many other cards that say, oh, let's say, for example, here. Um, so how does it work? The black symbols, I'm going to show you in the player eight, means that you gain something. It's full. Yeah. The empty symbols, the white symbols, means that you have to spend and these are expertise, which you can find on your fellow travelers right here, and you will find on the cards as well. And these are the actions that are the other actions which are occurring like special abilities of cards, how, what you, you shuffle cards, or you add cards, or you move cards, and so on. For example, here with this card, you can gain these, or the ammunition, and so on. So, let's say we did that one. So, there is no red, there is no red section, there are no choices right now, but there is blue section, and blue is options. 
this is, this is basically optional. You can either do the blue action or not, up to you. And here, for example, uh, you have two of optional actions. You can do them both. For example, here, with the ammunition, you can spend the ammunition to get extra food. That might be good. Why not? We have free ammunition. We can spend it. So here, you have to spend the compass symbol to walk. Walking is really, really important. That's basically how you advance on this path up right here. So probably you want to do that. So whenever you want, have to spend one of these expertise uh, symbols, which is compass, the whatever it is, the house and the leaf, um, you either spend them as the uh, cards, which have these symbols. For example, if you gain this card, you will gain this symbol as well and you will spend it for the house, let's say. Or if you don't have anything like that, so then you will spend health. So with compass symbols, so it matches the traveler right here, Isabel. So I can spend one health on Isabel to basically cover the compass symbol. If I don't want to spend it on Isabel, I have to spend two health on one of the other fellow travelers in order to advance right here. But let's say we didn't really do any of those, we didn't want them. So this card is done, it made, it's in the discard. We go to the next card. So this card now has these choices. Choices means that you will choose one of the sections to do. You must do one of the sections. The other ones are ignored. So here you spend one food to get this card as this symbol. You spend two health on your travelers or you spend the bullets in order to shuffle one of these, two of those next cards. For example, I want to just, um, let's say, do like that. Then I could do that. Let's say, let's say we did that. So we spent the bullet and we went to the next card. So, and as you go like that, you will do the events, you will do the choices, you will do the options and you will go through the cards trying to survive. Uh, you will spend a lot of resources, you will spend health, you will spend the tokens. Sometimes you gain health as you want to advance, you gain the symbols, you want to get them. Whenever you get through the path in the morning, so it's done. Let's say you, you did that, you survived somehow. So you're gonna flip this token to the evening phase. Each time you flip a token, you must pay the food, so they add. Now, whenever you play cards in the evening, they don't go in numerical order anymore. So whatever plays first will stay first, and then the next player, so it doesn't really matter what the number is right now. You will create a new path of six cards. And then you will go through them as well, the same way as we did right here. Trying to puzzle out your way out of this jungle path. Then if you survive the evening, you will turn the token over. Then next player will become the leader expedition, expedition leader, sorry. You will still spend extra food and then you will be dealt new cards and do the morning phase again and do the evening phase until you either reach El Dorado or you will lose the game by everyone dying. You, basically, you don't have to make it uh, through the jungle to El Dorado with all three of them. If at least one of them is alive still, well, when you reach El Dorado, you automatically win. And that's it. And that's how you play the Lost Expedition. When I first saw the box cover, I really liked it. Uh, but eventually when I saw the cards and the pictures, I was like, mm, I don't know if I like the art. And then I went back and forth. When I got the game, we played the game. I really like the art now. Well, I, don't know, I it's... actually remember that Ilya was super excited when he first saw the box cover. Yeah. And he got hyped with every next picture he saw. So... I mean, like, yeah, I got hyped because of the game. Because it was one of my most anticipated games of 2017. So that's why, but I mean, I wasn't a big fan of art until we played the game and then I saw the art and these big cards. The production quality is really cool. I like that very much. All the art and big cards with no borders. The box itself opens like a book. Really cool. The Osprey game does a really good job with the production. Yeah, no question over about that. Yeah. So the cards are bigger than usual, which is great, right? So you see more, uh, more of the um, art, you see symbols uh, larger. However, 
I think the cards might have been smaller, just like a regular size, because you will still see everything there. Mm. So it's uh, the art there is quite bold, and the symbols are bold. So if you make it mm -hmm. smaller, it's still really visible, but it will save the table space. I mean, if, so if you I have play like with... a conflict here. Yeah, if you play with two, but I like the bigger cards due to art popping out much more, and the symbols uh, are bigger, and you know, it's just better to see everything, in my opinion, with the bigger cards. So. Well, you can do posters then. Oh, right. So, but let's go to the theme as well. Uh, the theme here is the Lost uh, Expedition, sorry, uh, the, the Lost, lost Yeah, the Lost City of Z. That's what I wanted to say. It's inspired by the book, The Lost City of Z. We also saw the movie of it after playing the game, and the theme clicked even more. The, the film is really cool, and the game clicks with you, well, when you know the exact yeah. story of that the lost city of z the book or the film so i really like the idea i was like i anticipated the game uh very much because of the theme when i heard about the theme i just read about the theme i didn't know the components and didn't know exactly how the game plays yeah. i just heard about the theme i was like i'm in and the osprey games i really believe in them so i'm in the jungle thing there yeah. yeah so um there's also one more thing that I wanted to mention is that it's really easy to learn. Although first the iconography might be a little bit uh, confusing, but very, very first game. But eventually there are not many rules. You're just playing out cards and solving them. And you can teach it to non-gamers as well. I'm quite sure about that. So it has this kind of an entry level as well. Yeah, Ilya mentioned uh, that in the very beginning it might be overwhelming all those symbols. One thing is like you need to understand them, you need to understand what means like the yellow borders, red borders, blue borders. Yeah. But second thing is like you will be definitely overwhelmed by the amount of symbols you'll have the very first time if you're looking at the six cards. And later on it just it just takes time to like familiarize with the, with the symbols. Mm -hmm. So it, it might be rough the very first game. Yeah, but the I mean, next like, one is going to be easier and easier and easier. Because, for example, I don't find that the symbols are intuitive. Mm. I don't say that they are bad. No, don't get me wrong. But they're not intuitive, so it means that they are not helping you in this, mm. in this case. So you really have to <laughs> learn them. Yeah, there was a discussion. Some people think like there's like those white blank symbols and the black symbols, which are filled or full yeah. for me. So full means I gain. Uh, blank or white means I have to give it away mm -hmm. for me. For Alina, it was the other yes, way. So. For me, it was that the way around. Hmm. It confused me quite a lot. So it depends on the person, how, how everyone sees that. So, But um, this game, as I already told you, is all about just uh, solving the puzzles. So it has really big puzzly nature to it. You can play it in different modes. We're going to talk about it in a moment. But this is just a, a puzzle. You're going to throw those cards in and you solve the puzzle. And that's, that's the coolest part of the game, and that's the biggest part of the game, the key part as well. Mm -hmm. And then you can also mix and match the difficulty. You can make it more difficult with less food, uh, sorry, with less health. Uh, you can make it uh, less difficult, but I think the, the more difficult this game is, the, the, the more interesting it is. But sometimes you have, like, you have this card draw as well, which is random, sort of, I mean, like in almost every card <laughs> game, yeah. But what I, what I wanted to say here is that sometimes you are lucky, like in most co-op games, so sometimes you're lucky, you can, uh, you can get good cards in your hands and just go through the game and think like, oh, that was easy. And then next time when you play the game, you don't get so good cards in a row and you play in this, at the same difficulty level and you lose badly. And then you're like, wow. So, so this game depends on the luck of draw as well a little bit. But a I, tiny bit because of the because situations where you feel that the game is easy and you were lucky well, like, and you like the cards you have, it's not really likely yeah. because it's jungle and it's not easy to go through the jungle. So you won't, most of the case, you will have bad cards, really bad cards, awful cards and uh, kind of okay cards. Yeah. So these are the good cards. And the other side of the puzzle is that uh, where and when should you uh, place the cards down? For example, there's the morning phase, there's the evening phase. Mm -hmm. And you, I think you shouldn't leave the, uh, the, the bad cards to the evening and play all the good cards in the morning right away and then, oh, we're good, and then in the evening, like that, you know? Uh, you sh probably should be intuitive with, with this one, like where, what cards, so 
the order of the cards it's really important in the morning you have to go in the order from the lowest number to the biggest number you still have choices in the evening you just play them straight and yeah we're gonna talk about the, the different modes and the difficulties there as well yeah so the game has three different modes so it's fully co-op it is solo game and it is uh, face, uh, head, head to head, head. head, to head. Yeah. I played the solo as well, Ilya doesn't play solo. Mm -hmm. um, I found solo unbearably hard, it's mm. like unbearably hard. And I'm not even fully understand why, because I got pretty much everything from the beginning, less, less food, less everything. And um, to be completely honest, I didn't fully, I definitely enjoy co-op and head-to-head -head more, because in co-op I really enjoy mm. discussing. Yeah. And in solo, you take this one away mm -hmm. and it becomes fully, uh, fully puzzle game. However, it's a good puzzle game. Mm -hmm. And if you like the hard puzzles, then this one's for you. Yeah. Regarding the cope game, and I, li I like the head to head, but it wasn't my, my best choice would be cope game. For me, at least. I really like the discussion. Yeah. In head to head, it was just like each one of us playing. It was interesting as well, but maybe we should play it more to understand even more. But I mean, like in... In co-op, uh, I can compare it to Shahrazad, which is from the same company, where you have some tiles or you have cards, you have to play them, you cannot discuss them. Mm -hmm. And that's a really big part of this game as well, in Shahrazad as well. Very similar, where you cannot discuss what you play. Once you play it, you can discuss what you can do with this one. So that's really cool. And that's why maybe I like the co-op version, cooperative version the most. I'm not sure which one I like more. Uh, I was super intrigued. I really like this one time we played uh, head to head because it really gives such a different. Well, first of all, I'm not the hugest fan of cops. I more mm -hmm. prefer like uh, competitive games. So in uh, head to head, you are creating. You both of you are creating two separate tracks, and both of you are putting cards into those tracks. Mm -hmm. And then you'll have like the the choice. So either I'm going to choose the first the track, or for example, the second person is going to choose. Yeah. And when creating the tracks, you don't want to create one of them too easy and another yeah. one too hard. So there is a balance there. And then even when mm -hmm. you have to choose, it's not as easy as it might think. It's not like, oh, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Because that means, for, like, if I, in the morning, I'm the first one to choose, then it means it's guaranteed that in the evening, I will be second one to choose. So yeah. it has so many more layers into it that I might like. Mm -hmm. I'm not fully sure. I like might head -head like head-to-head more. Head -head more. Yeah, because I'm, I'm gave, fine with it. I will it totally gives, play it. Yeah, it gives such a surprising depth to, to the game and like yeah. such a surprising different I agree, level. Yeah. And I can agree on different level, yeah. Yeah, yeah. co, -op, co -op fun part was discussing, but yeah. That's where That's we, if we go to co -op and we uh, go with player counts, it plays up to six players, I think. Up to, but up basically, to five. Up to five or six? Up to five. Up to five, all right. So... The thing is that in co-op, you basically, you are controlling this, those three people that you take commonly between your, whatever, how many players you're playing. And that's where I think the more players isn't that good with co-op, because you have too many players trying to discuss the same stuff in the middle of the board. The, yeah, different players are playing the different cards, that might mm -hmm. be cool, but I really like it as a two-player. Yep. I was fine with three players as well, but I liked it with three players, but I would play two player. Yeah, well, I didn't feel I that when playing three players, I, I felt that I didn't want to add any more players. Like the three was yeah. kind of maximum. Yeah, yeah. However, we didn't just, try four and five, but it just didn't feel like it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you, you can, because you don't have one character each that you're controlling. Mm -hmm. You're controlling one thing. And you're all driving it together and trying to just to discuss and get the puzzle done. So I then cannot see it with four and five players. It's just, nah, whatever, just played with two. So that's that's my thing. I think if more the more players you have, the more situation you will have where there's like an alpha gamer who will do mm. all the discussion, all the choices. However, you have this expedition leader who will get the like a final decision. Still, when we had three players, there was like one one or two people who discussed more and then was like, yeah, 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 I, I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, the first thing. person was like, yeah, just yeah, doing something. So I think the more players you have, the more situation you'll have like that. Mm, probably. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but overly, what do you think? I cannot really put it into one or another category. If it's a, like, I feel like it's a full experience, but it seems to be a little game, yet it's not. I cannot really understand that. If you can tell me your own opinion. Well, my opinion is that do we have to label games uh, filler or not filler? <laughs> I mean, no, but, but yeah, it's... Maybe it's something in between. Do we have to label again? Okay, we don't have to label. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like, there are different games, there are different complexity, there are different lengths. So I think we mm -hmm. just don't have to mention it. It's a small packaged co-op game. But it gives game. really good emotion. Yes. It gives really good. It gives good emotion, and I actually took, completely forgot to mention that it's, uh, in my opinion, it's highly thematic as well, and it gives you those like story moments. For example, there is a card which uh, I really like. It's an injury. So you had an injury in the leg, and you have ch you have a choice to make to use your jungle experience and get food. Mm -hmm. So you have that all of that information have as a, as a symbols. But if, if you're like careful enough, then you understand what it means. It means you're going to cut the leg off and you're going to eat it because you're in jungle, you have to survive. Mm. And there will be so much more of those stories. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, well, might be, might be. And yeah. In most of the Your cases, imagination. You, if you get like a an an wild animal, you get a choice like to use the bullet and then they get food. Mm -hmm. It completely, it definitely tells a story. And I absolutely love when games do that. When um, the story and the theme evolves, like it just happens naturally. You mm -hmm. don't have to put all those, like, I don't know, beautiful like text or like flavor text or anything like that. You don't have to have like any like artificial kind of so this game definitely tells a story on itself so yeah. for example we had a story where like there was like everybody died but then there was one survivor was teddy who just yeah. had a tiny glimpse of the the lost teddy city survives and he, he died, all died. the time or dies the last so teddy is my favorite character i don't know why just just i like yeah. in the beginning he he survived and he won the game he found the lost city that's from there on my mission was to carry Teddy as long as I can <laughs> for him to, to, to get to the Lost City every possible time. So, so my yeah. point is, as soon as you're familiar with uh, symbols and you're not like hectically trying to like figure it out, then the game comes, uh, comes yeah. live, really. Yeah. Like you have to, if you don't feel the, the theme in the very beginning, just give it some time. One, two games and yeah. then you're in. Uh, and then just pay attention to pictures. I think for, for us, this one card was like, oh my God, this has so much more into it. Mm -hmm. And then we really started okay. looking at it. So yeah. I absolutely love this part. Yeah. And overly, I, as you already probably realized, it's really long review right now, really long final <laughs> thoughts. But that's because we really like the game. At least yeah. I do really like the game. It was one of my most anticipated games. And it's, uh, I think it delivered, delivered what I expected. I, I really like the game. I have played it uh, quite much regarding I mean, how much we different games we need to play or have to play or want to play. So this has uh, reached the table quite often. Yep. And I have showed it to other folks as well and they liked it as well. So this game is awesome. I really recommend this, this package. I agree as well. I fully agree. It's like a superb game for small group one to two people and the fact that you three, get that the fact that you get such a different game experience from one single box yeah super hard like <laughs> super hard solo puzzle okay uh decent cop co like really good discussion cop co or head to head with completely different amount of choices so, mm -hmm. so i think it's but it's you do recommend it. You do recommend it to solo players. Oh, definitely. Well. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, most certainly. So everyone. Who I lost solo. like two times badly, and I was like, nope, it's just too hard for me. I, I'm, I'm not enjoying it. But in like in two days, I was like, you know what? Let me try again. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. So now you know our opinion. Go buy this game, or if not, then uh, what are you doing here? So <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for watching. We we'll see you another time. Bye bye.